So I had a user on YouTube ask a question. Can you do an example of an air handling unit with 6,000 CFM supply, 5,000 CFM return, and 1,000 CFM fresh air with zero exhaust, unless it's economizing? There is a exhaust fan at the zone level at 1,000 CFM that's separately ducted from the system. This is how the building stays neutral. The auto sizing always makes the supply and exhaust fans the same size, which is wrong. Issue one, and I am not sure how to tell the fresh air and exhaust air dampers to work with this 1000 CFM offset. It doesn't seem to be much for configuration. So let's do uh, an example of this. Um, we'll go to apply measure now and we'll just create a DOE prototype building and this is just a measure you can download from the building component library. And you will just click this measure. And we'll just stick with small office, all the default stuff. Apply measure. And this has created a prototype office building for us for simulation purposes. We'll go to the go to the thermal zones tab. And we've got five thermal zones and an attic. And none of them have exhaust fans, so we'll just We'll put an exhaust fan on here. On zone four. And we'll just set this to always on. Quarter inch of pressure. We'll say for flow rate, maybe a hundred CFM. Yeah, we can do probably more than that based on the building size we'll say 250 CFM um, and you'll note that uh, it comes in as defaulted to decoupled and there's different ways to control exhaust fans at the zone level um, by default it comes in decoupled which means it's not reliant on the air loop HVAC system that serves that zone to turn it on and off it's um, decoupled means that it it runs on its own schedule um, but we're going to want to do coupled here so that um, it, it's always available but it defaults to the air loop system that serves this zone. So whenever this air loop system is is turned on, then it will turn this exhaust fan on. And that's what the coupling does. And we'll go to the this is perimeter zone 4 air loop system. So we'll go to the air loops tab. We'll just take a look at this real quick. So we've got a unitary heat pump system. But for this, uh, we actually need to have 
a return fan. So let's just put in a constant volume fan on the return side of the system. And this serves zone 4 with the exhaust fan that we just placed. We'll take a look at these. It looks like the whole system is set to auto size. Layer flow rate when no cooling or heating is needed. Um, yeah, we'll just leave that as is. Auto size, auto size. Okay, and so we'll go ahead and run the simulation. And it looks like the simulation is completed successfully. And we'll go to reports and we'll look at the air loop and we'll scroll down to zone four. And Open Studio results come in a sequence of the equipment that's on the air loop and it starts with the return side of the air loop. So this would be the return fan. It's sizing the return fan for 744 CFM. And the unitary heat pump fan was sized for 744 CFM. And this is despite us having an exhaust fan that's scheduled always on in that zone. And that is because Energy Plus does auto sizing based on the loop itself and it doesn't take into account any external air balancing and that's that's an important part of energy plus it doesn't automatic it does some air balancing but it doesn't do all air balancing so you need to make sure that um, your system is balanced um, for yourself now, it does account for this during the simulation um, because of that coupled toggle switch that we selected on the exhaust fan. So, let's take a look at the air flows on some of the system nodes. So let's scroll down, let's go to, we'll go to output variables and we'll grow, go to uh, system node oops, went too far system nodes and we want to look for here we go current density volume flow rate and we'll set the time st time the uh, we'll set the uh, increment to time step the time step of the simulation and we'll click save and we'll just go ahead and run the simulation again success and we'll go to results summary and um, we can scroll back down to zone 4. You'll see that same thing. The supply and return airflow rate, uh, airflow, supply and return fans are sized the same size. So let's go to D view to view the output reports on this. And, and we'll s go back to the air loop so we can figure out what nodes to look at. And let's see here. So we're going to want to take a look at the return node. So this is actually the supply inlet node and the supply outlet node. So this is the supply side of the system. So we're going to do 
perimeter zone floor supply outlet node and perimeter zone floor supply inlet node and you can see that the return the inlet node side the return side is quite a bit less than the supply side so this is another important point to make the way energy plus calculates air flows and sizes systems is based upon the zone level sizing so energy plus figures out zone level sizing first zone level mass flow rates and then everything propagates out from that so if the zone requires a certain amount of airflow then you will follow the loop back to the first fan it comes along and that fan will have to supply that amount of airflow likewise as the zone has return air there's a certain amount of return mass flow rate and the the next fan in that chain of the loop has to flow that amount of flow rate so basically these are not actually fans they're not pushing air in the sense of what in in the way energy plus calculates it energy plus calculates fan energy use based on that airflow that the that the fan theoretically should have been flowing so these fans don't actually push air into the zone and the zone receives that air not in the sense of how energy plus calculates it energy plus back calculates it from the zone and it tells the fan you have to supply this amount of airflow and this is how much energy you will use so with that said you can see that the return airflow is lower than the supply airflow for that zone and you can also check to see how the economizer dampers are operating um, we can do relief air and outdoor air and mixed air we would have to find these on here here's the outdoor air node so the outdoor air is flowing a little over 250 CFM and that corresponds to the 250 CFM exhaust fan that we applied to that zone now if we turn that exhaust fan off you would probably see this ventilation airflow rate dropping lower than the 250 but because that because that exhaust fan is on and it's operating with the air handler the outdoor airflow rate in that in this outdoor air system has to flow a minimum of the 250 cfm for, for that exhaust fan and we can we can uh, we can we can take a look at this if we wanted to and rerun the simulation with the exhaust fan turned off and we can see what that outdoor airflow rate is so let's go back to the zone exhaust fan and let's see better yet we can turn the exhaust fan on and off in the middle of the schedule and we'll just create a new schedule on off. Okay. 
and we will turn the we'll just turn it off in the middle of the day so we'll see the difference go back to the exhaust fan and EF schedule save run success and let's open up DView again And let's take a look at the zone 4 outdoor airflow rate. Now we can do inlet node, outlet node. Okay, so first of all, you can see that in the middle of the day, the exhaust fan turns off. And the return airflow jumps right back up. So you can see that the, that exhaust fan is during the the first part of the day. The exhaust fan is on, and it's re, and it's it's returning less air to the air handler. <clears throat> and let's just look at the outdoor air node. And same thing, you can see that there's during during the first part of the day when the exhaust fan is on, the outdoor air outdoor air system is supplying extra outdoor air, and then when the exhaust fan turns off, it drops down to minimum outdoor air, or um, if it's economizing, it it might drop down to a different setting. So that is how you know that the outdoor air system is operating correctly and that is how you ensure that your exhaust fans are balanced with your air loop and that that's this is this is uh, how you turn that toggle that on and off and if you want that exhaust fan to operate independently of the air loop you can put it on decoupled and it, it will run on its own schedule but um, it, it will still affect that return airflow to the system so going back to the original question um, the bottom line is the auto sizing sizes the system for the maximum airflow and if you have a return fan that's actually sized for less um, which could be important for energy calculations um, you're going to have to hard size that to the uh, the airflow, the supply airflow minus that um, exhaust airflow. So for the, for this instance, um, we would have to go to the maximum flow rate, hard size, and I believe the system airflow was. Hmm. How would we do that? Um, supply airflow is about 750. So, so we would just size this for 500. And that is the si that is how you ensure that your exhaust fan is sized properly. Thank you. Please like and subscribe.